Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the process of development and testing that these drugs have to go through before they can be used in the real world. Luckily for us, microorganisms and plants have been evolving for millions of years and along the way they have also evolved to produce a range of substances that are able to do all sorts of things including killing pathogens. This means that Instead of having to develop all of our drugs from scratch, we have been able to take these substances from them and either use them directly as medicines or sometimes modify them in a lab first and then use them as medicines. Let's take a look at the three examples to show you what we mean. Aspirin is a common painkiller that can be used to lower fevers. It is now super common but it was originally developed from a chemical found in the bark of willow trees. Meanwhile, Digitalis, which is used to treat heart problems like heart failure, was originally developed from a chemical found in these pretty plants known as fox gloves. In fact, this originally made the plants so valuable that they almost went extinct in the wild. Also, the most famous example is the origin of penicillin. Alexander Fleming was a microbiologist who studied bacteria. One time when he returned to his lab after a holiday, he noticed that a fungus was growing in one of his petri dishes and oddly it had killed the surrounding colonies of bacteria. After investigating, he found that the fungus produced a substance that was able to kill the bacteria and because the genus of fungus was penicillium, so he named the substance penicillin and that's how we have got our first and most widely used antibiotic. Regardless of how we find it though, once we have a substance that we think could potentially be a new drug, we need to start testing it and there are three main things to keep in mind when testing drugs. Efficacy, Toxicity and Dosage Efficacy is how well the drug works, so how well it produces whatever effect you are looking for. For example, how good is an antibiotic at killing bacteria? How well does a pain relief medication reduce your pain? A drug's toxicity meanwhile is how harmful it is. For example, does it damage our cells or have any side effects? And dosage refers to how much of the drug or what concentration of the drug should be given. Generally speaking, the more drug we give, the more effective it is going to be. But it will also cause more side effects. So now that we know what we are looking for, we can look at the three main stages of drug testing. In the first stage, the substance that we think is going to make a good drug is tested on human cells and tissues which can be grown in a laboratory. The benefit of this is that we can easily and cheaply test tons of different substances. The downside is that it doesn't really tell as much as about how the substance would affect an entire organism or even how it would affect a particular organ. If the substance looks promising though, then we can move on to the next stage, which is on live animals. For example, in the UK, all drugs must be tested on two different types of live mammals like mice and rabbits. As humans are also mammals, our bodies are going to be quite similar to this. And so this stage can give us pretty good idea about the efficacy and the toxicity of the substances. We can class these first two stages as preclinical because they don't involve any humans. The final stage is clinical testing where we finally give the drug to humans. The first step of this is to give the drugs to healthy volunteers. Starting with a really low dose, just to check it doesn't cause any problems. Then we slowly increase the dose with doctors, keeping a close eye on the health of the volunteers, checking for any side effects. The aim here is to basically find the maximum dosage that we can give before we start to get side effects. If this all goes okay, then we give the drug to people suffering from the particular illness that the drugs are trying to target. And again slowly increase the dose, this time we are looking for the optimum dosage. 
optimum dosage the dose at which the efficacy is maximized but the toxicity is minimized the last thing we need to talk about is how we can ensure that the process is fair and the results we find are valid to achieve this we see that clinical trials should be blind and use a placebo now a placebo is a substance that just like the real drug but doesn't actually do anything for example they often look exactly the same but are made up of a sugar instead of the real medication the most common technique is to give half of the volunteers the real drug and the other half of them will receive the placebo but most importantly we don't tell them which they are taking which is why we say that trail is blinded in fact most trails are actually double blinded where neither the doctors nor the volunteers know which drugs have been taken by whom until all the results have been analyzed at the end of the study now this might all seem a bit complicated and pointless but the purpose of all of this blind and double blind stuff is to avoid any unconscious bias for example if the volunteers knew that they were taking the drug they might be more likely to report any side effects and their doctors might be more likely to notice them finally once all the drug testing is complete those all written up and they are peer reviewed which means that they are analyzed by other scientists to check the tests involved were fair the rigorous analysis by other scientists is central to all of the science and it helps to prevent any false claims or results from getting published and finally this is the end of this video in the next video we will see the four phases of clinical trials sorry about being so long it just turned out to be a pretty big topic if you think these longer videos work fine then please do let us know down in the comments as it helps us when we trying to manage what to put in which video otherwise cheers for watching and we'll see you in the next video